And we're back. The time is now 5 o'clock. Our top stories that we're following at this hour. Investigators have concluded a four-day search of Philip Garrido's home and his neighbor's backyard. We'll tell you what they found coming up. Meanwhile, the district attorney will decide today whether to charge the foster father of Hassani Campbell with murder. We'll tell you about that story in just a moment. And in Southern California, a massive fire continues to burn out of control at this hour. More than 50 homes have gone up in smoke. Thousands more are threatened. The latest on the fire coming up in just a moment. We're also following the forecast this morning. A live picture here of the Golden Gate Bridge. The traffic is light. There is still some morning fog, some clouds out there. Drew's tracking it all. Good morning, Drew. Good morning, James. Yes, indeed. Taking a look at some patchy clouds and fog to start out our day and mild conditions all around the Bay Area. Temperatures uh, primarily averaging off at about 60 degrees and taking a look at some weather headlines. We'll see clouds and fog this morning. Mild conditions as we head into this afternoon with a few warm spots and we'll see a minor cooling trend as we head towards the weekend. We'll have a full check of weather coming up in just a couple of minutes, but first let's get a quick check of traffic with George. And a quick look at the ride on the Nimitz Freeway. 880 traffic through Oakland, very light right now. A quiet ride, 238's been re opened in San Leandro and the drive time from San Leandro into downtown Oakland, a scant eight minutes up to 23rd. A complete traffic check straight ahead. James. All right, George, thank you very much. Now on to our developing story this morning, the J.C. Dugard case and the investigation of the suspected captors, Philip and Nancy Garrido. Here's what we know so far. Today, police say they have found a small bone fragment on the property next door to the Garrido home. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Also, county inspectors have now condemned the home. They're telling people to stay away. We'll tell you why. Meanwhile, a woman who was kidnapped and raped by Garrido 23 years ago is speaking out now about her experience. We'll hear from her. And did you know Garrido was sentenced to life in prison for that crime? The big question, of course, this morning is why was he let out? We'll take a closer look in a minute. Meanwhile, police, as we said, said they found a small bone fragment on the property next door to Philip Garrido's home. You see that hole that was dug out there? That's reportedly where they found it in that hole. It's not known if the bone is human or animal yet. Authorities are looking at that right now. But they are searching Philip Garrido's property and the one next door for any possible links now to unsolved crimes in the area. County inspectors have also condemned the home, deeming it unsafe due to substandard structures and buildings as well as junkyard conditions. Those are the words they're using. Officials say for now they're done with their search of the Greedo property and the neighbor's home, but they'll be back if new evidence leads them there. And we're also learning more about Philip Greedo's criminal past. He spent more than 10 years in prison for raping a Lake Tahoe woman back in 1976. That woman spoke to CNN's Larry King about the violent attack and how she survived. Take a listen. I screamed. I started screaming, oh my God, oh my God, it's him. He's the one who kidnapped me. Did I you live upstairs. in fear of him all oh, these absolutely. years? absolutely. Now he went to jail of what he did to he you, did. right? He did, he went to prison. For how long? For 11 years. When he got out, you were in fear that he'd come after you? I think he did approach me after he got out. I think he came to my game up in Lake Tahoe at Caesars. Um, he, was on, he was just being paroled, he was in a halfway house and um, I think he came up and approached me and in a threatening manner. Well, he took me to a mini warehouse. Oh, he took you out of there? Yes, he, um, he transferred me after he handcuffed me. He transferred me into the passenger seat. He pulled a leather strap out of his hair and he tied my head to my knees. And no my hands were handcuffed behind my back. He threw a coat over my head so I was below visibility in the car. And he took me to a warehouse in Reno a mini warehouse in Reno, in a very desolate area. What? Philip went out to answer the door, and uh, he came back in and he said, it's the heat. Am I gonna have to tie you up or are you gonna be good? And I said, no, I've been good, I've been good. Don't tie me up. And so he went back out with the receipt, and I sat there for a minute and I thought, if there's a policeman out there, I have to try. I have What'd to. What'd you do? I went crashing through, over, under the rugs, over the boxes, right out into the uh, parking area where the policeman was. Completely naked. Whoa. And the cop immediately what? He looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> and Philip looked at me like I was crazy. And I said, help me. Help me, please. Now, Katie Calloway Hall explained that Garrido stopped her and asked for a ride. And that's how she was uh, in the car with him. Hall also said that she was held for eight hours before a police officer came by and ultimately set her free. 
Stay tuned to Cron 4. We're going to have the latest on this as it develops. And you know what? Coming up at 515, we're going to talk to the prosecutor in that case back in the 1976. The prosecutor who successfully convicted Garrido and won a life sentence for him. He'll talk about why Garrido was let out. More on that in a minute. Cronford.com, though, the latest in the developments in this case. From here, let's go to Southern California, where we have wildfires still burning down there and uh, dozens of homes now up in flames. And look at the acreage there at the bottom of your screen, 105,000 acres burned so far. This fire burning in the hills uh, of the Angeles National Forest there, 12,000 homes threatened right now. It's called the Station Fire, and it so far has killed two firefighters. And as we said, burned more than 100,000 acres. Residents who lost their homes have begun returning to the ashes. That's what's left of their homes. The lack of wind has kept flames from driving into the heart of uh, some dense suburbs out there northeast of Los Angeles, but they're worried that the winds could pick up. Fire crews set back fires and sprayed fire retardant at Mount Wilson, which is, of course, home to at least 20 television station transmission towers, radio and cell phone antennas as well. So if that mountain goes, a whole lot of communication problems are going to be experienced down in Southern California. Meanwhile, the Los Angeles County Fire Department plans to hold a memorial service this week for those two firefighters that were killed Sunday when their truck careened off a cliff. They were overrun with smoke and flames. The department is sending crisis management teams to help colleagues grieve the loss of 47-year-old Captain Tedmond Hall of Oak Hills and 34-year-old specialist Arnaldo uh, Quinones of uh, Palmdale. Hall is survived by his wife and two sons. Canonis is survived by his wife, who's expecting their first child. All right, on that note, let's get an update now on the weather forecast here in the Bay. We've got mild conditions in store this afternoon. Drew's tracking the latest temperatures for you. Good morning, Drew. Good morning, James. Yes, indeed, keeping an eye on a mild start and a mild afternoon. Temperatures are going to be pretty mild for the entire Bay Area. We'll see 70 at the Bay and 63 degrees at the coast. It's 508 on the Cron 4 Morning News. Let's get a check on traffic with George. Thanks, Drew. We'll start off with a look at the ride on Interstate 80 in the westbound direction Trail currently service in the Bay Area. And we're just now two days away from the closure of the Bay Bridge. Later this morning, we'll be talking uh, with uh, Caltrans Public Affairs Officer Lauren Wonder. Uh, she'll be in the studio to talk, us, uh, talk to us about what you can expect in the way of negotiating any potential traffic jams on the closure over Labor Day weekend. James. All right, George, thank you very much. 510 is the time. Now to the latest developments that we're following. The district attorney could decide as early as today whether to file murder charges against Lewis Ross, the foster father of Hassani Campbell. Meanwhile, Hassani's foster mother, Jennifer Campbell, was released yesterday due to lack of evidence. In fact, this is a video of her leaving Santa Rita Jail in Dublin. You can see her there surrounded by her family. She took a moment to speak to reporters. Here's what she had to say. I'm accused of being over and over again of doing something that I didn't do or knowing something. And I told him I didn't. And they had to let me go. Sorry about him. He wouldn't, as far as I know, he wouldn't do anything either. And of course, stay tuned to Cron 4 and Cron4.com for the latest developments in this case. We're going to keep an eye on the story and let you know if the DA does, does in fact decide to file charges against Asani Campbell's foster father. All right, 5.11 is the time. We've got to take a quick break here, but we'll be back with more in just a moment. Let's go outside, give you a live look this time from Southern California. We've got news choppers above giving us these live pictures of the station fire. That's that huge wildfire burning in the Angeles National Forest. More than 100,000 acres burned, more than 50 homes destroyed. The latest in just a moment. Stay with us.